All right, so on a problem like this, if they're asking us to go ahead and determine the rule, uh, the first thing, Caroline, we're going to want to make sure we have is I notice that it's an alternating sign, correct? So the first thing that I know I have to incorporate is negative 1 raised to the n. Obviously, this is more detailed than that, but I know I have to include the negative 1 raised to the n because I have alternating signs. Um, so now, let's go and look at it. Now, remember, when we did an alternating sign, if you put a 1 up there, if I put 1 in for n, that's going to make this um, negative, right? That would make my first term negative. Right. We notice that my first term is positive, correct? So what I need to do is I need to add that. I need to add 1 to it. Because think about it. If you put a 1 in there, 1 plus 1 is 2. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So therefore, that's going to make my first term positive. Mm. So now, I have now resolved the alternating signs. I haven't figured out the formula yet, but I have now at least taken care of the alternating signs. Because now the next one, when I do 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 1 raised to an odd power of 3 is going to be negative 1, meaning whatever my rule is, I'm going to multiply it by a negative which will make my second term negative, okay? Because remember, this is your first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. So now I forget, now I've created my alternating signs. So now what you can do is forget about the positive and the negatives. Look at how do you relate the number in the sequence to its value? And what rule would that have to be, Juliana? How do you go from one to two? You can multiply by 2. Does that work for each one? Forget about the signs. The signs yeah. don't matter. Yes, because remember, the signs are right here, right? So you can say negative 1 times 2 times 2 minutes. And that's the rule. 